Good morning, One Name Church. Thank you guys for hanging out with us here online today. Excited that we are in church in this week two of our Kingdom Builder series. And we're excited as we dive in and learn how we can build the kingdom here on earth and in our lives. So if you're ready for God's word today, get excited about it. How about you share this link, get someone on here to to hear the word of God, put a fire emoji, however you express your worship to God. As we worship earlier, let's do it now through his word. So just get ready and we're going to get ready to hear God's word today. And I'm excited to dive in because I believe God's given us a key ingredient to build his kingdom here on earth. It's his characteristic, it's, it's his heart, and we're going to dive in. And in the scripture we're reading today, it's in Matthew. And Jesus, he is talking to the disciples, and he was preparing them to build the kingdom here on earth. And what he gave to them was a command, like he did last week, he said, go make disciples. And then they were ready to go, and he was telling them some key things that they're going to do as they go spread the gospel as they go build the kingdom here on earth. And he says this in the word, and I believe this is going to impact us and help us build the kingdom of God here on earth and in our lives as a church. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew 10, verse 7 through 8. I'm going to read the NLT version, and this is what Jesus says. And the context of this is he's sending the disciples out to, to preach the gospel to the, to the Jewish people, not the Gentiles yet. That was Paul's responsibility. But he was sending them out to do this. And he said, you need to go to house to house. You need to do this. The 12 of you need to go and, and go to every area and preach the gospel. He was giving them instructions. And I'm just going to read verse 7 through 8. And this was his final instructions. He says, go. I love the word go. It's there again. I love how Jesus just says to build the kingdom, we got to put we got to put our energy on. We got to put our batteries in. We got to go. We got to get up and go. We can't build the kingdom sitting down. We can't build the kingdom being lazy. That's why he told the disciples, "Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near." So he's telling them that you need to go to to these people here on earth, to the Jewish people, and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. It's coming to earth. It's near because he has ushered in the kingdom. Jesus brought the kingdom to the earth. He told the 12 to go tell them this. And this is what you're going to do to help build the kingdom. You're going to heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. And then the last thing, this will be our key today, one of the key ingredients is give as freely as you have received. See, I titled this message today, The Key Ingredient. And I believe that Jesus is giving them the instructions of how to build the kingdom here on earth. And he's telling them this and heal the sick and go uh, cast out leprosy, cast out demons, and he's telling them these things. But the last part, I believe, is the key ingredient he gives them to build the kingdom here on earth. And he says, give as freely as you have received. See, when we read that verse, we love the first four key in- other ingredients to, to make the pot well and build the kingdom. We love those, but when it comes to giving freely as you have received, that's much harder to do. It's much harder to be generous. We love uh, casting out the demons and the things that make us feel good. But the last part, Jesus was challenging us that if we want to build the kingdom here on earth, we must... Be a giver. We must be generous as freely as we have received. See, I don't know if you're a cook. I'm not a cook. I'm not. I don't cook in my house. I only know how to cook one meal, my wife says, and it's a frozen meal. And in this frozen meal, you know, it's just very easy. You put it on the stove and you do all these things. But, you know, being a cook, you have to learn that there's ingredients that you put into the pot or whatever you're making 
that if you don't put in certain ingredients, it tastes different. It's not as good. It's, it's different. And what I've learned as I cook things is if I don't put the right, if I don't follow the ingredients, if I don't follow the way that it's supposed to be cooked, then it won't taste well. It won't be good. It won't be full. It won't be whole. And I think the same is true in the kingdom of God. If we choose to take out ingredients, if we choose to say we're only going to live by this and only build the kingdom this way and not put the right ingredients into building the kingdom, we will not build the kingdom effectively in our lives and here on earth. And I believe the key ingredient that Jesus is trying to get across the disciples as they go and spread the gospel and build the kingdom here on earth, what he's trying to get across to them is they must have a heart of generosity. They must be willing to give as freely as they have received. And you have to imagine these disciples, they had nothing. They were going out with nothing. They were going out and Jesus was telling them to go, if you got to stay at someone's house and if they offer you a meal, take it. They didn't have a lot, but they had the good news. And Jesus says, if you want to continue to usher in the kingdom of God, as you go and build the kingdom, you have to have a heart of generosity. You have to have a heart of being a giver. See, in this heart, it's not just something that is talked about. But this heart is from God. This is God's key ingredient when he built the kingdom here, when he started by sending us Jesus. This is what he started with. This was the key ingredient to bring the kingdom forth here on earth. And it's God's heart. It's God's characteristic that he is generous. Look at what it says in John three sixteen. You might have heard this verse before. It's at football games, it's everywhere, and it's a famous verse. But what I love about this verse is that it shows us the key ingredient to building the kingdom of God. Because God did it, bringing the kingdom here. For this is how we know God loved the world. He gave. See, this is how we know the kingdom of God is available to the broken and the lost. This is how we know that we have hope in the name of Jesus because God gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. See, God gave us Jesus so we can be free from our sin and the punishment of sin. God gave us Jesus to redeem us, humanity, back to him. He brought the kingdom forth by giving us Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the king of our kingdom. And if, if God gave us Jesus, he started with the attitude of generosity and giving. He was a giver. He's trying to get across, like Jesus says in this verse, that the key ingredient for us to build the kingdom here on earth is being a giver, is being generous, is giving as freely as we have received. See, we must embrace this quality from God if we want to build the kingdom here on earth. And most of the time what happens is when we hear giving and we hear things that have to do with money, because it doesn't just have to do with money. Generosity can be with your time. It can be with anything. But one of the main things it is is money. And sometimes we hear that and we just turn it off. Or maybe if you had a bad experience where someone abuses that in a church and, and maybe you, you don't know and people, you're all well, giving in the church and I don't know about this and you feel some type of way. But the kingdom of God is built on a giver. The kingdom of God was built by God giving us something. And that's the key ingredient to building his kingdom. And we must embrace this quality and we must become like God. We must become generous. 
We must become generous to the world around us, to God's church, to our family. We have to be generous and be open-handed because this is the key ingredient to building the kingdom of God here on earth. Giving is the key to building this kingdom. And we know this because this is what giving does. This is what giving to God's house, giving to the poor and being generous, this is what giving does. Giving exhibits God's heart. See, God's heart is giving. He gave his one and only son. And when we give, it exhibits God's heart to the world. It shows the world the heart of God. And his heart is a giver. See, giving also testifies to God's power. See, when we give and when we're generous, like God was generous to us, it testifies of God's power, saying, look, God owns every cattle on every hill. He will always supply my needs. I will not go without because he has the power to provide. And when we give, we show God's power to ourselves and to the world. And that brings the kingdom forth here. See, giving also gives praises to God's character. When we give, we we give praise to God's character because God's character is generosity. God's character is being a giver. And when we give, it shows God's character to the world. This is how we build the kingdom. And then the last thing is God's, or giving advances God's kingdom. See, this quality that Jesus is trying to tell his disciples to live by as they go build the kingdom, and God did, and how he led by example, this quality advances the kingdom of God here on earth. See, God has given us the key ingredient to building his kingdom, and it starts with us giving. It starts with us being generous. And if we want to see the kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to embrace this quality that God demonstrated to us when he gave us Jesus. But we can't do that if God is not our master. We can't do that if we choose to put money and things of the world over God. Because when we put God first, we start to live like him and have his qualities and demonstrate how he gave us Jesus. But when we choose to put him lower than that and put things over him, that is when we miss out on this key ingredient in building the kingdom of God here on earth. So look at what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24. He said, no one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. See, Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was preparing them to build the kingdom. And he said, if you want to build the kingdom here on earth, you got to make God your master. You cannot serve God in money. You have to trust God with money and let money serve you. Come on. Who wants money to serve them? Who wants to go through life and say, you know what? I, I can trust that God will take care of me. See, you can have that. You can be encouraged today because when you trust God, with your money, when you trust God with your resources, you will never go without. You may not have it all. You may not be rich. But I've experienced in my life, every time I've trusted God and been open-handed to him, I've never gone without. I always have what I need because God is my master. God is in control of my life. Not money, not how much money I make, not the material things. No, God is my master. And when God is your master, you have nothing to fear. 
because he is in control. And like Jesus said in this verse, he will give you everything you need. That whole verse talks about it in Matthew. It talks about how why store your treasure here on earth? You need to store it in heaven. And if God cares for the birds and make sure, make sure they eat every day and the flowers and make sure they look good, don't you think he loves you? Don't you think he cares about you? That he will give you everything you need? We need to trust him, trust his heart, embrace this characteristic of him, this quality which is giving, and make him our master. This is how we build the kingdom of God here on earth. This is the key ingredient. And most of the time, we get this twisted. We think this is for someone else. We think well, what God is trying to say, no, that, that's for that person to be generous. And I don't have enough and I don't need. It's not about having a lot. It's not about having this and that. It's just having the heart to say, I am willing to trust you, God. Live open hand and not be enslaved by money. And I know when, you, when I do that, when I give, when I demonstrate your quality, that is when I will have everything I need and build the kingdom here on earth. See, the great theologian said this, Andy Minio. I love this guy. If you don't know who, who he is, he's a rapper, but he's a theologian too. He said this in one of his lines. He says this, money don't grow on trees, but it grows on me because I throw seed in the ground. Wow. I'll read it again. Money don't grow on trees, but it grows on me because I throw seed in in the ground. Man, I love that statement. Because what he is saying is money follows me. It grows on me because I throw seed in the ground. I have the quality of God, which is being a giver. I trust God with my resources. I'm generous, and money follows me. And I always have what I need. See, man, I'm a living testament. Me and my wife are that we started this church. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't know what we were going to do. And it takes finances. It takes money to build a church and, and have everything you need to do that. And we didn't know what we are going to do. And, you know, we left the, our job that we've been a part of for a long time. And we had stable income. And we came and we said, we're going to start this church. We believe in the name of Jesus and starting this church. And then we started the church. We came back after doing an internship, came home. And then COVID hit a month later. And we're like, what are we going to do? You know, this is challenging time. And through this whole season, the good news is this. We have never gone without. See, we have trusted God. We have continued to sow a seed, throw seed in the ground to build this church. And God has built his church. God has taken care of us personally. And God has taken care of his church. Because God will build his church and his kingdom. And the gates of hell will not prevail because God is in control. And when you trust him in this area, when you choose to put this key ingredient in your life in building his kingdom, God takes care of you. And you never go without. See, if we want to build God's kingdom here on earth, we have to be like God. He gave his one and only son. And if he gave his one and only son, we must give to. We must put this quality and embrace this as a part of our life. This must be who we are because this brings the kingdom here on earth. So how do we do this? How can we live out God's character like this? Because this is hard to do. How can we trust him in this area in building the kingdom? Because this is hard to do. Because we need resources to take care of our families. We need resources to, to do things. And how do we trust, you know, when it's not there or when we're struggling? How do we do this? I'm going to give you three things that we can do. How we can live like this to bring the kingdom forth in our lives. The first thing we do is we have to give consistently. If we want to embrace this character, so we have to become like God. We have to give consistently. We have to choose to be open-handed consistently. See, look at what it says in Malachi 3.10. I love this verse. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse 
Tithe is the 10%. It's the holy thing that we need to set apart to God before anything else, before we give money to anything else or we pay anything else. God says in his word that we are supposed to give 10% to him and set apart as holy. This 10% is a holy thing because it belongs to God. And look what it says. It says, bring it to the storehouse. Bring it to the temple so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, the heaven's armies will open up the windows of heaven for you. Come on. Who wants the windows of heaven opened up for their life? I do. He says, I will pour out blessings so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it, he says. God says, put me to the test. I love this. I love what Malachi says. He is saying that when we give consistently, when we choose to set the tithe, the first 10% of what we make holy, we live out this characteristic of God and we test God in it, he will bless us. He will take care of us and not just bless us normally, it will overflow. And I'm not just talking about blessing in money. I'm talking about blessing in life and blessing in health and blessing in opportunity. There's more blessing than just money. I think we get it twisted sometimes thinking, well, if I give, you know, you know it's going to be, I'm going to have money returned back to me. No, when he's talking about that, I'm going to have blessing returned back to me. An overflowing blessing. See, we build the kingdom of God by giving consistently, not giving periodically. When we give consistently to God and we choose to have this characteristic, that is when we bring the kingdom forth because God has given to us consistently. God has given us what we have and he's always taking care of us when we give. Look at what Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth. The first fruits, I love this. The first fruits of all your crops. The first of everything you have. Not the last. Don't honor God with the last. Honor God with the first and the best. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Come on, who wants to live an overflowing life? Who wants to have blessings that are overflowing? Who wants to have opportunity that's overflowing? Who wants health that is overflowing so we can be a blessing and we can build his kingdom? See, we build his kingdom by giving consistently and setting apart the first 10% as holy. It says this in Leviticus. This was the foundation of what God was talking about. It says one-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain from the fields of fruit, from the trees, belongs... To the Lord and must be set apart to him as holy. See, the first ten belongs to God and it is holy. And if we want to build the kingdom here on earth, we have to set that apart. The first, the best. Make it holy and give it to God. And he says, put put me to the test. You have a, you don't want to do that or you think you don't have it or whatever. You know, put me to the test. God is, this is like one of the only things in the scripture that God says, test me. You don't believe this? Test me. And what I love about this is I've done this because it was hard for me to get this. Like, what do you mean, God? You know, I don't have a lot of money. When I started to put this into practice and give consistently and test God, man, the blessings that I had and the things I haven't gone without and I've always had what I need, and I've seen it happen in my life. So I challenge you today, if you're not doing this, just test God. Start. Because this is how you build the kingdom here. This is how we bring the kingdom here to earth is when we give consistently. Number two, how we get this quality in our spirit and be like God is we give cheerfully. We give ex- we're excited about giving. We're excited about being generous. We're excited that we have this quality of God in our hearts, and this is how we live and build the kingdom forth. So when we have an opportunity to be generous, we have, when we have an opportunity to give, we're excited. We say this here at One Name Church, generosity is our passion. 
We are passionate and excited when we have the opportunity to give because we know what it's going to do for the kingdom. We know what God can do with the little that we give and how he can expand it and use it for his good and build his kingdom. So we're excited. That's why we clap. We get excited and we shout when we give because we know what God is going to do. And we know that it belongs to God, the first 10. And, man, he could do so much more with the other 90. And we just give cheerfully and excited. Look what it says, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. I love this because no one's forcing you. No one's doing. It says you have to decide with God to demonstrate this quality. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Don't just give because someone talks about it or whatever. Give when the Holy Spirit is guiding you. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. God loves a person that is giving out of his heart, out of his quality. Not the saying, oh, well, my pastor said I got to do it, so I'm going to do it. Or my mom says I got to do it. Or my family member. No, not giving out of pressure. Not giving because you have to. Because you don't have to. You don't have to give nothing to God. You don't have to give nothing to God's house. But when you get to, when you have the mind says, I get to build the kingdom, I get to give to God, and you do it cheerfully, that is when you start to become passionate about it. That is when you start to see what it does and how it brings the gospel forth here on earth. And you can walk in and be excited when we talk about being generous and living like God. So let's give cheerfully. This is how we bring the kingdom forth here. We give cheerfully. We give consistently. And the last thing is we give freely. Like Jesus told his disciples. He says, give freely as you have received. Give freely or give generously. Not holding on to what you have because you received it. But when you received it, being just as excited as when you received it, is when you start to give it. See, uh, we all love receiving, right? We all, oh, I love, it's, it's almost Christmas time, and I love getting gifts. And I'm teaching my daughter this, and, and it's like we're, we're trying to teach her, like, it's not just about getting gifts. You know, you're going to get a lot. You get a lot of grandparents, right? You got a lot of family. You're going to get a lot of stuff. It's about giving. And we took her, and we went out and to get some presents uh, uh, for her cousins. And, and she went to the store, and we're excited that we're going to see them open it up. And just to see and start to teach this, and she's two years old, and say, you know what, we're, it's exciting. She's like, oh, look, Bubba might want that, and Bubs might want that. And she started to look around and say, she started getting excited about it, and even more excited than when she would go in and, and get stuff for herself. And we need to have this mindset that we need to give freely as we have received. Because when we receive it and we give it freely, this is how we build the kingdom here on earth. This is how we have true life. If you want to have this life that only comes from Jesus and only comes from his kingdom and not be stressed and worried and, oh my gosh, what am I going to do and this and that. If you want to have this uh, peace in your life, especially in this area of finances and resources, you have to give freely. Because when you give freely, you trust God with everything you have. You live open-handed and you have a true life and you, you experience this and you prosper. Look what it says in Timothy about this. It says this in Timothy right here. It says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud, not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Come on. We know that in 2020 that it's so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do Good. He goes on to say this. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. See, when we're generous, when we give freely, that's when we experience true life. Life abundantly in his kingdom. And that is when we start to build his kingdom here 
on earth. Proverbs 11.24 says this. It says, give freely and become more wealthy. And I love this because it doesn't just talk about worldly things. It talks about being wealthy in the kingdom. Being wealthy in blessing. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Do you need to be refreshed this season in 2020? Do you want to prosper this season? Do you want to go into 2021 with faith like none other? It starts with not holding on to what we have, but giving freely to build his kingdom here on earth. See, when we have this characteristic of God, he gave his one and only son. When we live like God, and we do what Jesus says in Matthew, and we give freely more than we received, when we demonstrate this quality, that is when we see the kingdom here on earth. And as we're talking in this series of building the kingdom of God, the question we have been asking is, will you build the kingdom of God with us, with me, here at One Name Church? Because we have an opportunity to do that, to play our part in the kingdom of God, to bring it to South Florida, to heal the broken, to give people identity in the name of Jesus here in South Florida. God has called us here. God has given us a vision to do this and to declare his name, the name that is above every other name. And the key ingredient to doing that is being generous. Generosity is our passion. And it starts with us living open-handed, trusting God in this area, living out this characteristic. And when we do, we see the kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we have an opportunity. Next week, we're going to take a kingdom builder offering. Basically what this is. It's an opportunity for us to live out what Jesus is saying, to build his kingdom, to give freely, to give consistently. Whatever, wherever you find yourself in the journey of what I talked about today, you can just start. Just start. We want everyone to participate. If you call one name church your home, you're a part of the family, we want everyone to participate and do what God has put on your heart. Like Corinthians says, each of you must decide in your heart what to give. Me and Jamie have been praying, and we believe that this is going to set up One Name Church to help the kingdom of God here on earth. Because everything that you give for this kingdom builder offering, it's our first one in the existence. Everything that you give will go towards us launching an in-person service. It'll help us advance the kingdom here to help us get everything we need to create a safe environment in person to build the next generation with our kids ministry and our youth and to, to create an atmosphere so people can come hear about the name of Jesus which is hope so would you pray about that and next week would you join me and Jamie and the rest of the one named family as we give to the kingdom open-handedly to see what God can do with it. We're believing that God's going to do a miracle, not just in what we're doing to bring the kingdom forth through One Name Church, but in your life. So let's trust God in this area. Let's live out his characteristic. Let's test him and see what he does. Let's pray. God, we come to you right now. Help us be like you. You gave your one and only son so that we can have life and have it eternally. Help us live like you in our lives. Help us not hold on to what we have, but to be generous, to be passionate about it, to give consistently, cheerfully, and freely, because this is what you've called us to do, to build the kingdom. Help us play our part. And God, we are asking that you continue to provide like you have during this challenging season. It feels like a drought, but it's not. You are providing for us in every area. So help us live like you and build the kingdom of God 
and make this the key ingredient in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, come on, give a shout of praise in the chat. I'm excited that you guys uh, hung out with us today and heard this message. I believe God's going to do something through our generosity. So be back next week as we take our Kingdom Builder offering as we prepare for Christmas because it's coming soon and we cannot wait to see what God is going to do. We love you guys. Have a great day and we will see you next week.